I don't drink. With the sole exception of Amarula, which is a South African cream liqueur made from the fruit of a tree fabled to get elephants drunk, I just don't have a taste for alcohol. Now, I promise, we're going to return to my singular drunk experience later, and how it relates to not supermassive pachyderms, but interstellar objects. But more to the point of this video, I think I should count myself lucky. Because alcohol doesn't just harm the liver, it harms sleep. Alcohol intensifies this effect. 38 hours without sleep. Two very different factors, sleep loss and alcohol. If you wouldn't do it drunk, exposed healthy adults to alcohol, consider that what is socially acceptable doesn't necessarily align with biological reality. And this pushes us towards sleep. There is no sweet spot for alcohol when it comes to sleep. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. I want to show you rather stunning data that two very different factors, sleep loss and alcohol, compromise the same pathway in the brain. Now, as a brief roadmap to this video, first, we're gonna break down the data on the molecular overlap between sleep deprivation and alcohol intake. Then I'm gonna explain how alcohol affects sleep quality, focusing on REM sleep and drawing on findings from a new 2025 meta-analysis of controlled trials. Finally, I'm going to try to offer some practical insights and takeaways to help you make more informed choices about whether to consume alcohol, how much, and if you choose to consume some alcohol from what sources. So with that, let's jump into the primary study. It was published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. And in this study, researchers explored the brain's adenosine system. This is a regulator of sleepiness in the brain. Basically, adenosine, a molecule, builds up as our cells burn ATP energy. And this pushes us towards sleep and drowsiness. This is one of the molecular mechanisms behind sleep pressure. If you want more on the molecular mechanisms of sleep pressure, you can see this video. Anyway, alcohol intensifies this effect by increasing adenosine levels in the brain and boosting activity of the adenosine receptor, particularly the adenosine receptor A1 subtype, A1AR. And interestingly, sleep deprivation also increases the availability of these same exact receptors. So in short, both alcohol and sleep loss toggle the same dimmer switch in the brain that drives sleepiness and cognitive impairment. Now, to test this connection, the researchers behind this study that exposed healthy adults to alcohol and on a separate occasion, 38 hours without sleep. They also measured A1AR receptor activity in the human brain using PET scans after an alcohol infusion. And there were several major findings. I'll highlight three. One, alcohol exposure and sleep deprivation cause similar impairments in sustained attention on psychomotor vigilant tasks. Two, individuals who performed well after alcohol intake were also more resilient to the effects of acute and chronic sleep loss. And vice versa, those who performed poorly after alcohol were more susceptible to sleep deprivation. And this was also independent of baseline performance. We'll get to the implications in a moment. And three, on brain imaging, this PET imaging I told you about, alcohol caused a clear and strong increase in the A1R1 receptor availability. And you can see that here. The top row shows the baseline A1AR receptor availability, and the bottom row shows receptor availability 50 to 80 minutes after alcohol exposure, 40 grams of ethanol. More green, orange, and red indicates more receptor availability, and you can see the brain lights up after alcohol, more adenosine receptor availability. So simplified, alcohol molecularly mimics sleep deprivation. And if you want a sense of just how large the effect was, the authors note it is comparable to a respective decrease observed after four cups of espresso. Or put another way, when you dose adjust, it appears that each standard drink of alcohol has the biomolecular sedative effect equal and opposite to about 1.4 espressos. There's a fun fact for you, but take it with a grain of salt. Now, based on these data that we just reviewed, you might conclude that alcohol would help you fall asleep faster. In fact, alcohol is often mistaken for a sleep aid, but I caution you. The reality is that alcohol disrupts sleep quality in profound ways. Chief among these, a significant negative impact on rapid eye movement, 
REM sleep, which is critical for memory, mood, and overall brain health. In fact, a recent 2025 systematic review and meta-analysis of 27 controlled human trials revealed a clear dose-response effect. The more alcohol one consumed, the more it disrupted REM sleep. Let's look at the dose-response effect of alcohol on sleep across three measures. There's REM sleep duration, total REM sleep on the left, sleep latency, which is how long it takes you to fall asleep in the middle, and REM onset latency, how long it takes to enter REM sleep on the right. So let's start with the middle graph. What you notice here is that alcohol only shortens sleep latency, that is, helps you fall asleep faster at a particular dose, and it's a pretty high dose. But if you follow that same dose across to both REM graphs, the story evolves. That helpful dose, quote-unquote, that gets you to fall asleep just a little bit faster already causes substantial impairments in REM sleep, including delays on the onset of REM and shortening of overall REM sleep time. And the higher doses make these effects even worse. So the moral of the story, the simplification here is, there is no sweet spot for alcohol when it comes to sleep. The point at which alcohol starts to help you fall asleep faster, it's already begun to erode the quality of sleep, robbing you of the REM your body and brain need. Now, I hope that made an impression, but here are some major takeaways and implications. First, know thyself and thy sensitivities. These data suggest that sensitivities to alcohol may predict who is at most risk from sleep loss. This is critical knowledge for professionals, like healthcare workers, truck drivers, and persons in the military, and so on. So if I were to develop a short science-based public service announcement, I'd go with something like this. Go hard on booze or miss out on snooze, both flip the same brain fuse. Basically, again, alcohol and sleep deprivation, they impact the same pathways to cause sleepiness and cognitive impairment. That stick? Let me know. Second, if you wouldn't do it drunk, don't do it drowsy. These data highlight the underestimated dangers of drowsy driving and other activities, which may be as physiologically hazardous as driving under the influence, driving drunk. Consider that what is socially acceptable doesn't necessarily align with biological reality. Driving drowsy is really dangerous. Also consider this. It's normal for a surgeon to operate sleep-deprived, and they don't need to disclose that information to patients. And personally, I wouldn't want my surgeon operating on me drunk or sleep deprived, but I guess that's up to you. Now, before we wrap up, I promised to share the story of my one and only drunk adventure. It happened back in college during finals week. A relative had mailed me a few bottles of Amarula to enjoy with my friends. The problem was my school had just instated a hard alcohol ban. Now, not wanting to waste the nice gift or get busted for having it, I tried to rally some company to help me out, but everybody else was buried in books. So I took the only option left to me. It wasn't really the only option, but it felt like it at the time. I made sure it didn't go to waste on my own. Ironically, I don't recall sleeping that night, but from that point on, my tipsy alter ego gained a reputation. He loved to dish out bear hugs while passionately lecturing about the sheer power unleashed when supermassive black holes collide, a cosmic event so violent it can release the mass energy of multiple suns in a flash, with a power output rivaling all the stars in the universe combined in that moment. So yeah, that's what drunk nerdy Nick likes to talk about. But anyway, now wrapping up for real. What's really clear here from these data is that vulnerability to sleep deprivation and alcohol, it's not random. Interestingly, it's a trait-like characteristic. It's shaped by genetics and individuals' brain chemistry. Just as some people get tipsy after a single drink while others might be more tolerant, some crash cognitively after just one bad night of sleep, while others can push through it with lesser impairment, at least acutely. And surprise, surprise, a person's resilience or vulnerability to sleep deprivation and alcohol appear to be coupled. That's really interesting from a social and clinical perspective and makes sense mechanistically now that we understand these converging pathways. So if you're the type who feels alcohol sedating effects very strongly, chances are you're also at more risk when short on sleep. 
And in today's 24-7 world where sleep loss and alcohol often overlap, that makes understanding this shared biology not just a matter of science, but a matter of public safety. I hope you found this interesting. Stay curious, and if you're engaged in Sober October, hats off to you.